All of us uh, across America still recovering from the uh, Oscar Marathon, the Sunday night Oscar Marathon, all the hype leading up to it. And um, the Oscars, because of all of the red carpet pre-shows and the pre-pre-shows and whatever, kind of put the focus on... I don't even want to say fashion, because I don't know anyone who wears those kinds of clothes. Except at the Oscars. I mean, do you really think that women were writing down the name of the designer of Charlize Theron's dress? Or Renee Zellweger's dress? And they're going to go out to, like, Marshall's or Ross Dress for Less and pick one of those up? Come on! These are not even fashions. You know, to me, a fashion is like when everyone's wearing the same thing. And there's a big trend and everybody's wearing it. These clothes are not going to start any trends. Because I guarantee you, today, there are no women wearing any of those clothes. And that brings me to talk about um, all of the TV shows, the features, and most of all, the magazine, Vogue. Mirabella, um, 17, all of these fashion magazines and the women who read them, why? It's no more than a fantasy for the women who read these things, come on. The young women who read these magazines can't afford any of that stuff. Older women uh, look at this stuff and uh, aren't they just like jealous? These are your uh, competitors. <laughs> You'll never look that good again, ladies. Never. Uh, you're not going to buy these clothes. You're not going to be uh, seeing women wearing these clothes. And on top of that, for all the talk about fashion and all this fascination with everything from the Academy Awards to Vogue magazine, can I tell you something? American women are the chunkiest, sloppiest, most slovenly women in, uh, in the world. Least feminine. American women are butch and disgusting. No doubt about it. I am amazed at the uh, butched up chunksters who head into the supermarket to pick up fashion magazines and are flipping through them. You'll never look like that. Never. I don't understand why your average American woman ever reads a fashion magazine or watches anything on TV. This America, the Oscars, or any of the other shows, any of the award shows, to see what women are wearing. Because not only can they not afford these outfits, but American women are slobs. You want to see how sloppy they are? Walk into any supermarket, any produce section. And instead of looking for tomatoes, how about you look around some of the tomatoes standing around you? The big, overly ripe ones that I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? And take a look at the women in the supermarket. Now, they don't expect you to look. See, uh, women might try to dress up to go to a bar or a dance club, but they act as if they're invisible when they go to the supermarket or the laundromat or bowling alley. At the mall, women tend to dress up, mostly because they're going to see other women there. And they they don't they're in competition. But even then, what are we talking about there? Look around you when you're at the supermarket and look at the women there. That's your average American woman. That's her in all her glory, with her hair looking like a butch little rat's nest and um, wearing leggings or sweatpants. Running outfits, pair of scuffed up white Nikes. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, the average American woman is an out and out abject slob. I'm not saying men are any better, but men are not reading, a straight men are not reading GQ. Straight men are not watching the Oscar pre show to see what to Johnny Depp is wearing. We're just not. But women are fascinated with what other women are wearing. And I don't get it. 
I mean, the Oscars in no way represent a cross-section of American society at all. And, and, and fashion magazines, even less so. CNN has fashion features and other cable networks and they're, they're all these makeover shows and everything. The American women are just slobs. How often do you see a woman that's really dressed hot? At best, if you're lucky, in the United States, a woman will dress like a slut. Nothing fashionable about it. You know, and, and most men don't care. That's fine. You dress like a slut, you, you, you speak in my language. Okay. But as far as dressing, you know, what's the word? Not classy. Anytime you use the word classy about something, it, it's definitely got no class. Okay. But you know what I'm talking about. The way women dress at the Oscars or in fashion magazines, you don't see that in the real world. If you're an average waking poison, you don't see that. And you certainly don't see it when you're at the laundromat, the supermarket, the bowling alley. You just don't. Even women going to work wear those sensible pantsuits or whatever, those sensible outfits where you don't see any flesh at all. You don't see women going to work dressed like Halle Berry. They're dressed more like Diane Keaton was in the Oscars. You know what I'm saying? So I'm wondering, um, I want to talk to women, and I want to find out from the women listening to this program right now, do you read fashion magazines? Do you watch fashion shows on TV or makeover shows where somebody comes in and makes a woman over to look like she's on the Oscars? Do you watch? Why? Tom like it. Come on. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. How are you today? Do you care? Yes, I do, because I don't want you to rip me a new one, because I don't agree with you on what you say. The Tom Like It Show. The Tom Like It Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number, Francesca. You're on the Tom Like It Show, Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey. I have to agree with you on some stuff, but I have to disagree with you, too. Of course, there's a bunch of slabby women. There's also slabby men in this country. It's America. That's what you get for the fast food over here. But there's also really beautiful men and really beautiful women. Well, we're not talking about whether they are beautiful, although uh, we can get to that in a second. We're talking about uh, the, the way they dress. I understand. Americans dress Americans dress like abject slobs. That's how we dress. Of course. I, and and you know what? Men men are slobs, and I'll, I'll I'll cop to that. But what I want to know is why women read fashion magazines since they dress like a bunch of fat slobs. Because they want to be attractive. But they're not, and they can't be. How about they take the Krispy Kremes out of their mouth? Well, they will start somewhere, right? No, well, you know what? It, it never, it never happens. They're, America's getting fatter and fatter, and Americans dress sloppier and sloppier. Yeah, but TV over here is almost like theater in Europe. People have to find their role model somewhere and learn from something. Well, they if don't. The there have been gener dear, there have been generations of people who've grown up with television here. I don't know what country you're from, but in this country, television's been like this for years. We've had the Oscars on TV for years, and women watch the Oscars and Miss America and fashion segments on CNN for I generations I now. I think the Oscars are still okay. But, but the point I'm making to you, dear, don't get me off the track here. The point I'm making to you is all the fashion magazines and all the Oscar pre-shows and Grammy pre-shows haven't improved the way they look at all. Women are fatter and sloppier than they've ever been. True, but what about the beautiful... So what's the point of even watching? They all come on, that number is dwindling. I watch it. American women are getting fatter and sloppier as I'm speaking. By the end of the sentence, they'll be fatter and sloppier than they were before I started. What about the men, then? Uh, it, it, again, men don't read fashion magazines. Straight men don't read fashion magazines. Uh, you know what? The men who watch the Oscars generally watch it with a gun to their head. Their wife is watching it or something like that. Uh, not true. It's gay men and women who watch the Oscars. Not true. In fact, in the ad, in the advertising business, the, the Oscars are being referred to as the gay Super Bowl. Okay, but gays dress nice. Straight, but straight men. We're not talking about gay men here. I mean, I give many. And by the way, I know gay slobs, but certainly less than there are straight slobs. 
Okay. But, and that's but, totally but I'm fine. talking about straight straight men don't read fashion magazines. Uh, they do not. Uh, they watch uh, the Oscars to see what 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 Brad Pitt is wearing or Johnny Depp is wearing uh, or Ben Stiller is wearing. Uh, men just don't care about that kind of thing. What I'm asking about is if women are a bunch of big, fat, chunky, butched up slobs, why do they bother to watch any of this stuff or read these magazines? Because they want to be better. But no, but they, they, no, they don't, and they never get better. Yes, they do. That's their dream. That's uh, yeah, but they don't about. ever get better. They read the magazines Why is that? and they watch shows like the Oscars, but they don't get any better. No, but they dream about it. I know. Uh, that's my point here. They dream about it. It's a big dream for them. But when young people still watch it, then they can maybe get into that direction. They don't. Well, I watch it. They don't. I like Women walk around with the stretch pants and their butt cracks hanging out in this country okay, well, with all this fat, rolls of fat sticking out. Let's talk about the young people who watch it. Like, why I watch it. Go ahead. I watch it just because I want to see what people are wearing. I'm not just talking about the Oscars. I'm talking about all fashion okay. magazines, fashion uh, segments on TV shows, makeover shows, all of it. Okay, I don't watch that. I could watch the Academy Awards because I want to know what people in my profession are wearing. Oh, so you watch it for professional reasons. You see, I watch the Oscars because I need to be able to talk about it on the radio. Okay. But but I'm, I'm going to tell you, watching people mincing around and, and, and uh, reviewing uh, what gown people are, each person is wearing is, is not my idea of entertainment, and I certainly wouldn't watch it if I didn't have to. Well, it's a female thing, though. That's my it's point. It's a male thing. Well, I know. But then who's watching it but a bunch of chunksters, a bunch of haagen uh, swillers, uh, who are sitting there on their big, fat sofas and their big, fat asses. I think all kinds of women are watching it. No, but uh, you know, most American women are big, fat slobs. Let's face facts. Okay. But... Or fugly, someone... homely, butch. I mean, you name it. They fit into one of those categories. Yeah, but you know that turkey necks, so butter faces. Outfits. Yeah, the average American woman looks like Sofia Coppola. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, okay. Well, I think and the nominees are. Had a better hairdo <laughs> yesterday, then she would have looked better too. Please, it's you know what? About... She would have looked better with a bag over her head. Come on, that's the only way she would have looked better. You can always improve with uh, improve with hair. Oh, or... I know, I know. What what are you queer eye for the straight guy? Please. You know, the fact is, it doesn't matter how much you improve. You, you could send her to the best makeover stylist in the world, Sofia Coppola. You're still gonna have that big schnoz and be a butterface. Well, you can always get a little better. All right. Well, I've had enough. Thanks. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Crystal on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. Good. Um, I had a couple comments. Yeah. Um, I guess I agree with some of you and. You know, disagree with some of yours. I I don't watch the award shows, but I'll go on the internet and look at the pictures afterwards. Why? You know, it's just interesting to see to me what they're wearing. Why do you care? It's not that I care. Yeah, you do because you actually have, have to turn on your computer and log on and type in a URL, and you have to go there and look for this stuff. Why do you I care that much? In anything, it just pops up on the homepage at MSN. But you know, none. But then you don't have to click on any of the pictures and look at look at the other pictures. Why do you do it? It's just, you know, it's interesting to What's me to interesting what about it? Wearing. You're not answering the question. Why is it interesting? Specifically, what is interesting about it? What is interesting about it is the fact that it isn't something that you're going to see out on the streets. It's not something you're going to see anybody else wearing. And that's what, you know, it's, it is total fantasy. You know, and Why then, fantasize about that, dear? Your days are over. You'll never look like that, ever. You'll never <laughs> dress like that. You'll never look like that. People will never want you that way. Why bother even fantasizing about it? You, you, well, you know I what? didn't say I was fantasizing. Make the most of what little you have. I mean, you you probably look at men's magazines as do, you know, Which 90% ones? of American men out there, and there's not a chance in heck that you're going to end up with that centerfold. Well, dear, first, first of all, I uh, first of all, I have been with Playboy models, uh, number one, but number two, and more importantly, um, I don't look at Playboy for the very simple reason that I get hotter looking at women uh, down the block who I could get. Okay. Uh, I, I, I really don't care about looking at Playboy or Penthouse or uh, uh, videos or any of that stuff. I don't care. Uh, okay. it, now, I'll tell you what. If somebody's babysitter down the block sent me a video or a picture, I'd look. <laughs> but I have no interest in looking at women I'll never meet. 
All right, what about the makeover shows, like where they do the extreme makeover? Never, ever. Surgery. It, it, the straight man, what straight man watches that voluntarily? Well, Please. I mean, they actually have guys on there, so they're... I don't, I, I, they're dear, there are guys on Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. How many straight men watch that show? I don't know. I haven't seen Please, it. well, let me, let, me, let me assure you, not many. Anyway. It's, 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 it, it's fag hags and the men who love them. Well, it, it's, it's fun to listen because it's like listen to a married couple fight. You know, and you you don't. Why? Well, you, you know what? I I I'm married four times. I heard enough of that at home. I don't want to turn on TV and watch that. <laughs> well, you do it on the air with all the women that call in. So it's you know what? I get paid for it. But I'm home. I don't want to do it. I don't want to see other people do it. <laughs> well, do you realize? By the way, think about this for a second, dear. Do you realize there's a man in New York City who signs his name on a check every week so that I will have this conversation with people like you. I, I'm a talk show whore. Do you understand? It's America not. I'm having a conversation. Now, now you're calling from Baltimore. I was just in Baltimore the other day. Can I tell you something, dear? Uh, if I if I was walking down the street, if, if I was walking down the street in Baltimore and I met you, I wouldn't have two words to say to you, because I'm not on the clock. I'm talking to you now because I'm on the clock. And just like if I were Burger King and you'd have it your way, I'm talking to you now, but I really have nothing good to say to you if I'm not here, a chain to it at this desk, talking to you now. Cool, man. So you understand that it, it's just as if, like, let, let's say you were, a, let's say you were a guy and so you, you never got laid, and your dad takes you to a hooker and pays her to show you how to do stuff. I, somebody paid me to talk to you. But, I mean, somebody's actually, like, paying money to you so that you have to sit there yes. and, like, listen to me. Right. That cracks me up. I, that's right. I, I, I'm, like, under the I gun. I that, man. I have no choice because uh, your call was put through to me. I pressed the button. And then well, and then it's like I have to listen to you for three minutes. My call was put through because apparently I'm the, the proper age, so. Well, you, were, you, you fit into, uh, somehow, into the demographic. You just barely, but you do. Scary, isn't it? Yeah. But don't, don't worry, that, 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 that day will come when you don't, and then I'll have to talk to your younger replacement. <laughs> well, there's plenty of them out there. That's don't worry, I know. It's not fun when I don't fight back, is it? Dear, there's nothing fun about this job. <laughs> I sit here, I listen to you blab at me. Are you married, by the way, dear? Um, I am currently not married. Currently I'm not married. So, so you're an ex-wife to somebody? I am an ex-wife to somebody. Well, you know what we always say? One man's trash is another man's treasure. I say to any man who goes out with you, remember, some other guy put you into the recycle bin. Some other guy's going to think, oh, my God, look how lucky I am. The Tom Likey Show. Four This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles to 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. One of the sloppy, slovenly, butchified American women read fashion magazines. Watch the Oscar pre-show, Grammy pre-show, American Music Awards pre-show, whatever. Why? Why bother? Barbara, on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Hey, I watch it because I like to watch Blackwell's list when it comes out. I just get a kick out of how he grades the women. But you're awful cynical on the women today. How so? Well, you're really cutting the women. I mean, I'm... Tell me that what I'm saying isn't true. Well, it's not true with me, but I would... Dear, we're not talking about you. It's a generalization. In generalization? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. When you go to the supermarket there in Everett, Washington, and I've been to Everett... Uh, when you go to the supermarket, I don't know, the Everett Mall or wherever, uh -huh. look, you look around the produce section there, are you seeing, like, hot chicks all dressed fashionably? Yeah. Are you? Really? And the next That's time we're in town, we're going to take the limo up there and take a look. No, I mean, on the covers of the magazine. No, no, I'm talking about in the store. No. 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 And, and so you're, you're telling me that you agree with what I'm saying, you just don't like the fact that I'm saying. What is the way you're saying it, though? Oh, so in other words, what I'm saying is true. Well, I, yeah, I guess if you put it that way. But it's, well, that's, you... that's all I care about. Is it true or not true? And it is true. Uh, that's not fair. What's not fair? You put me on the spot because I was all ready to get on you about how you were talking about the women. Yeah, but uh, even you agree with me. Well, okay. Maybe I agree with some things, but... No, you agree with everything. The have... only thing you don't agree with is my tone of voice. You agree with everything I said. 
Typically, yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, okay, you got me. <laughs> All right. Like a house of cards, dear. Like a goddamn house of cards. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Allison on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Great. Good. Um, I agree with you um, in terms of how American women look when they're out generally in public, unless they're at some sort of evening event. But I think that it's a similar explanation as the way that the average American man reads SI, reads ESPN magazine, sits at home Saturdays or Sundays and watches either college football or... Yeah, but men don't read those magazines or watch those games for the same reasons that women read fashion magazines. It, they don't. Well, I don't know. Why do you think that they read them? I mean, it's... There's... I, will t I will tell you. In fact, the answer is far deeper than what you expect. Uh, it is my opinion, and I, I speak from experience personally and also from experience uh, that, that other people have told me about. But, but it was my personal experience that many men who have children don't know what to say to them or how to talk to them. And for men who have boys, many times the only way that dad can relate to his son is to talk to him about sports and take him to sporting events. And I do believe, and I, I say this as an adult male today, who attends probably a hundred sporting events a year, I believe that one of the reasons I started going to sporting events was looking for the kind of male companionship that I either had or that we were hoping to have with our fathers. That's what it is. Okay. In, in many cases, that's the only, you know, when my dad came home from work at night, he didn't ask me how I felt or was I happy or he asked me how the Mets did today. That's all he knew how to do. How'd the Knicks do today? How'd the Rangers do today? Yeah, I think that's, I mean, I think at a very deep level, it that's is, a good explanation. That is, that is all it is. It is not men thinking, you know what, I'm going to play right field for the San Francisco yeah. Giants one day. They do it for I want to see, I want to see. Too much into it. Hey, hey, come on, I, men do not read sports magazines uh, hoping to ultimately be uh, athletes. Tom, that's not where I'm going. I'm just saying that they also just read it for enjoyment. They enjoy it. So, so as you yeah, but but that's that is the reason we enjoy it, which is not the same reason that women read fashion magazines. Women read fashion magazines, uh, fantasizing about being stylish and fantasizing about being trendy and fantasizing about being beautiful, and hoping one day that. Uh, Prince Charming will ride in on his white horse and uh, pick you up and put the glass slipper on. Oh, yeah. I uh, think it's Which will way. never happen because most American women are chunky, butch, and slovenly. Yeah, I'm not trying to disagree with you. I was just, was just trying to make a parallel. So that's why I say, why bother reading a fashion magazine? You know, if you're going to take that uh, Mrs. Smith's apple pie and the uh, gallon of Dreyer's ice cream home and you're going to drown your sorrows in it again tonight. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1 800 5800 Tom. Don on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hey. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Good. Well, um, a couple of phone calls back, I heard um, someone saying that you mentioned about Nicole Kidman and how great she looks. I don't think she looks great at all. I think she looks Well, actually, I, I, I didn't say that I thought she looked great. I was, like, making doing an imitation of somebody saying that. Oh, okay, because I, I was to understand that, they, that people want to look like her. Oh, well, there are women who want to look like her. That's, that's the point I was making. They think she looks hot. Oh, well, I, I don't agree with that. Well, you don't, but, but most women do. Well, I, a lot of women I talk to think that she just needs a little bit more curves to her. She's, she's got a nice set of knockers, but um, yeah, I think she's kind of white bread and bland looking. Very. Plus, very. She, plus she's past her expiration date. <laughs> a lot of us are. I understand that. But I, you know, well, to talk about the fantasies or whatever, I think uh, when girls are, are little girls and the dress up and all the dresses and all that, I think that is part of them. As they get older, they still like to see that kind of thing. And I think that's why they keep looking at it. I watch it because I like to see what they're wearing. Why do you care? Because I like to see the... These are outfits you will never wear, things you can never afford, being worn by people you will never meet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why do you care? 
I, it isn't that I care. It's that I want to see it. Just I'd be more I interested in going to, like, uh, let me give you an example. If, if I wanted to see what people are wearing, I'd go to, like, my own high school reunion. Well, that's no fun. Well, they'd be there. At least they're people I know. Yeah, but they're not wearing the clothes that they wear at the Oscars or these women that are wearing. But, but the point is, I, who cares about the, These are fashions that even these people will never wear again. I mean, come on. They care about that. They want to see it. Just Why? See it. I don't understand it. I, look, I, we don't need any uh, help there, but uh, thank you. Amazing. Get a phone of your own. Dial in, please. 1-800-5800-TOM. Wendy on the Tom Like You Show. Hello. Hey, I agree with you 100%. I'm one of the, the, the slobs that are calling in. Man, when I go into the supermarkets, people are wearing that stuff. They're wearing nasty old things, and they can't even get in the check stands. They're so big. Right. You know, I mean, it's just totally, and you know, what they, you know why they're looking at their fashion magazines? It's so they have something to look at while they're eating their bonbons. That's why they're looking at it. Right. And these are the same attention whores. Yeah. Who, exactly. When they're in line at the supermarket, they have to reach below the Tic Tacs and the Kleenex and the Tampax <laughs> to get out their, their, their kitty cat checks. Yeah. And their big pink pen that they can write in big loopy letters. Yeah. Pavilion. Yeah, exactly. And then they, they write the amount in very slowly. Yeah, you know, have to... So that we all have to stand there and look at their big, fat asses. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're, they're huge. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not saying I'm, I'm gorgeous or beautiful or anything like that. I'm one of them. You know, I'm like 5'8". I weigh 200 pounds. I'm not saying I'm beautiful or I'm gorgeous, but I don't watch these these things on TV, they're stupid. You, you're never going to afford these outfits. You're never going to go anywhere. And even if you have... did, you'd still weigh 200 pounds. Yeah, you're still, no dress is going to make anybody weighing 200 pounds look good. Right. No way. Period. <laughs> End of story. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The advice dumped that ditch is a little harsh and rude. I don't care. I am harsh and rude. The Tom Like It Show. Yes, it's the Tom Like It Show. And uh, we're at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Brandy on the Tom Like It Show. Hi, Tom. Hi, Brandy. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, I just wanted to say I agree with you because I live in Washington outside of Seattle, and there are some fat, nasty women here. And not only they're fat and nasty, but they're hanging on to men with a bunch of kids, that, and the men are pretty hot looking. I'll be checking out a guy, and it's like they just this furry, hairy, fat thing hanging on them. Uh, you know, in the Pacific Northwest, I've never seen it more than anywhere else in the country. I know, and they can uh, use some uh, the, the, but, I, but that's where they all congregate. These um, these big bowling balls uh, of chicks who who are who are like with guys who like look fit, they look younger than these chicks do. I I don't understand it. I don't either, and I came here from Florida where women wear bikinis to the grocery store. You know. And oh, I know. I lived in uh, Miami for a couple of years. It was a man's dream. I'll tell you what. And not only that, but the girls here, the women here, they get jealous when they try to talk you wearing. Oh, why are you wearing that outfit for? Mm -hmm. And it's because they know you look good in it, and they don't want you to look good in it. They don't want the competition. No, nope, they don't. Mm -hmm. So that's why I go for the younger ones here then. You know, so they don't have the women and the kids yet. So There we go. Okay. Thanks, Thank you, Tom. Brandy. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Marie on the Tom Likas Show. Well, hi, Tom. First of all, I don't buy the Norman Rockwell picture that you painted of guys watching sports to find some way to bond. I, I've seen guys who watch games, and it's like they're playing the game themselves. They jump around hooting and hollering like they won the Super Bowl single-handedly. So they're living vicariously. I, I, I don't agree at all. I don't think any of these men, with few exceptions, and there are exceptions, but there are a few of them, I don't think these men think they're going in in the fourth quarter and they're going to kick the winning field goal. I, I just don't believe it. And, and I say this as a man who, who, A, grew up a man, and, B, goes to professional sporting events about 100 times a year. Well, I'm not saying that they think physically they're going to be able to do that. No, I don't even think in their minds they think they're going to do that. But they, but they are... I think teenage boys think that, but I don't think adult men do. I, I, I'm... The hard for me to believe because I've talked to so, so many guys that I know that are so into football. It, it's their life. 
it's it's like it's but, but that but that's why the reason you're giving uh, look i am a man and and i grew up in a in a family like that where my father really had nothing to say to me uh the only time that he was happy being with me you know, it's amazing how a lot of men just don't know what to do. They've got sons, and they don't know what to do with them. And so they take them to games. And and the, the best times I ever have with my father, few as they were, were at sporting events or on the way to sporting events or on the way home from a sporting event. That was the best. And, and the best conversation we ever had were about what team was going to win or what team was going to lose. That's what it's all about. Yeah, well, then what's wrong with, with people enjoying the Oscars or fashion magazines and talking about that, having some... So, I, I, because what I'm saying to you is I don't understand the American women's fascination with this since they're not fascinated with making themselves look good. Well, why should they have to hold themselves to that standard? Because Any standard. They, they're, you know what? How about looking as good as they can? Then maybe those women are. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're, they, they, the American women are the fattest in the world. The fattest... They chop their hair off in many cases. They wear these butch haircuts. They dress like slobs. I just came back from South America. You know what? You don't see fat chicks out of the street. They, they know well enough to stay inside. I, all you see on the street were these hot babes everywhere. And these women, were all, one was more beautiful than the next, and they were all concerned about looking trim and, 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 and being dressed well, and they were made up perfectly. I, it, nothing like this country. Nothing like it. Uh, I don't know. I, I just think that women who have issues with their weight... They're Which is most women in America. Okay, well, the, but there are a lot more circumstances that are involved with that. No, you... no. They, they eat like pigs. That's the circumstance. <laughs> they eat like pigs. Yeah. I, you know, yeah, they do. That, that's not a fair statement. What, what do you mean it's not a fair statement? I, I know people who have tried to diet and they still haven't been able to overcome their weight issues. They're, that's because they ate like pigs in the first place. There, two percent, two percent of people have thyroid problems, and the other ninety-eight percent of people are just plain fat and they eat too much. I don't want to hear about oh, I'm big boned, oh, I have a thyroid problem. The number of people with a thyroid problem is so tiny; it's one in fifty. Okay. Well, the thing is, they're living their lives. They're not trying to look good for you. They're living their own personal. Well, life. why bother? Why bother reading fashion magazines since you're never going to look like that? You're never going to wear clothes like that. You don't care about how you look personally. Why, why bother? Then why bother? You know, doing anything that you or enjoying anything that somebody else can do that you can't. Like, why should I watch ballet? You know, I'm never going to be a ballet. Well, at least, yeah, but at least you're watching people who are doing something. They're doing something. They're doing something that's beautiful to watch. They're doing something. Well, what goes into the fashion? It's like, art. It no, dear, you know what? Standing there in a dress is not art. It, ballet takes years and years of training and, and athleticism, which, yeah, which standing thing. around on the red carpet does not require. There's so much work that goes into walking down that red carpet. No, no, really there isn't, dear. Oh, yeah, there is. There's days of preparation. It, it doesn't no, there is not days of preparation. Dear, I've been to the Oscars, okay, and I've been on the red carpet myself. There are not days of preparation. That You're wrong. I know. I absolutely know. Because really? Because people in the industry, and what goes into looking the way Nicole can... No, no, but what do they do? Nothing. They sit there while the stylist dresses them, and then they show up at the appointed time for the limousine, and the limousine takes them, and they say, you get out here, and you turn left, and this is where you go. That's all there is to it. Is a job. Then you stand around going, oh, it was wonderful working with, with the Bob Conrad. It was wonderful working with, with Robert Duvall. Oh, it was so great working with Johnny Depp. Oh, it was so great working with a director like Clint Eastwood. I mean, come on, how much work does that take? I'm not saying it's brain surgery, but it is. It's job. not even close. Come like it. Oof. Come like it. Oof. Eight hundred. Five hundred. Tom. 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 I used to be 355. Oh, that ain't bad. That's just right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a plump rump. That's a roast. The Tom Like It Show. All right, let's take a quick one here. It's Angelina on the Tom Like It Show. Hey, Tom. Hi. I have a couple points. Real quick, because I have 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds. The first one is that I look at the ladies in the gowns because they're beautiful and it's eye candy. So it's just fantasy, like looking at a gorgeous car that you know you're never going to buy. Mm. And my second point is that I think all women... Are you into chicks? Is that your deal? 
Yeah. Oh, you're into chicks? Yeah. Well, that's a whole other story. <laughs> Why? Well, at least if you're into chicks. It's like porno for you, for God's sake. Well, I told you I only had 30 seconds, and I meant it. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show. Write us the Tom Likas Show. Post office box 4455, Hollywood, California, 90078. Email us. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. We'll call our comment line. The number is 310-842-9592. From Los Angeles, it's the Tom Likas Show.